in the february batch db in the src in the src instead we developed 11 programs you can see 11 items simple hello world programs 11 generally while learning while learning each topic advisable to develop in different folders topic wise topic wise all the programs very advisable to develop in the different folders in the different folders like for loops in one folder there may be 80 90 programs close to 98 programs are there in the for loop itself then <laughs> let us consider encapsulation encapsulation try developing in another folder exception handling in another folder polymorphism in another folder threads in another folder this way of development not advisable while learning while learning while learning we need to experiment we need to experiment various topics each topic experiment in one folder one topic in one folder another topic in another folder like a topic wise different topics in different folders so what you can do is remove both the folders select and remove just to create february batch dev inside a february batch dev I'm just choosing multiple folders, app one. App two. App three. Like several folders we can create. Choose one folder for one topic, Java files. Choose another folder, another topic, Java files. Another folder. So by the time of finishing Core Java Basics, we will be developing close to 37 folders here. App 1, App 2, App 3, App 4. For one topic, one app folder. App 1, one topic. App 2, one topic. App 3. Likewise, whenever we start a new topic, we will be creating a new folder. So you can have a one simple note file, just to develop a note file. In the February batch DEV, in the February batch DEV, just to develop one text document, right click, new text document. Right click new text document. Let us choose this file name as a note. In this note file, I can explain which topic I developed in the app one. In the same note file, I can explain which topic I experimented in the app 2. In the same note file, I can explain which topic I had developed in the app 3. Whenever you want to revive any of the topic, just to open a note file, you can easily come to know which topic is available in which folder. Inside a note file, just to open the note file, Right click and edit this. Right click and edit this. You can mention what you are trying to experiment in the note file. 
it is considered we are experimenting variables we want to know more about the variables in syntax then i'll be developing programs related to variables inside a app one folder so likewise app two app three app four all the files i all the folders i'll be exploring Whenever you want to revive any of the topic, open the note file. You can identify which topic you want. You can identify which folder for that particular topic. So, n number of folders we can create. In the core Java basics, we will not be using Eclipse. In the core Java basics, we will use edit base command prompt. In the basics itself, 37 folders we will be developing. After basics getting over, while moving to the advanced, for Java advanced, we'll start the Eclipse. In the Eclipse, we'll start developing from the advanced portion onwards. Now, in all the folders, two folders again, one SRC, other classes. These folders are for topics purpose. In every topic, we need to develop Java files, and class files, we are developing Java files. Compiler developing class files, we are developing Java files. Compiler developing class files. The inside app one. Inside app one, we are developing SRC. Inside the app one folder, we developed SRC and the classes. Go inside a SRC. Go inside a SRC. Try developing a simple Java file. Go to the edit place. File new Java. I'm choosing class name A. Save in the SRC of app one. SRC of app one. SRC which is there in the app one. Inside the app one, whatever SRC. Go to the February batch DEV. Go to the February batch DEV. Go inside the app one. Inside the app one, you can see SRC. Go inside SRC, save it as here dot Java. Now, let us compile and keep in the classes folder. Whatever procedure we have seen in the previous session, the same go to the Alt D, Alt D. CMD. The center.
trigger Java C command with a hyphen D option. Yesterday we have seen hyphen D option usage. Compile the class file kept in the classes folder. Go inside a app one classes folder. Get our class. Compilation is done. For running purpose, you have to go to the classes folder. Directly, I am mentioning classes folder. Trigger Java command to run a class. Class here. Simple Hello World development card. Now, Come back to SRC. <clears throat> Let us see the different folders, whatever we have created. So E drive, E drive I am representing with E colon, E colon represents E drive. In the E drive, February batch DEV, this is one folder. Inside this folder, we created app one. Inside app one, SRC. Inside SRC, A dot Java. So we also created classes folder. Then there is an app 2 as well. There is an app 3 as well. All these are there inside a February batch. In the February batch, there are three folders. Inside an app 1, there are two folders. One is a SRC. There is a classes folder. Inside a E drive, February batch. This is the total directory structure. Check it out. In the E drive, February batch DEV. In the February batch DEV, we created three folders: app one, app two, app three, app one, app two, app three. Inside app one, SRC and the classes. Inside SRC, A dot job. Now, in the command prompt, in the command prompt, we are in the SRC. In the command prompt, we are in the SRC. 
this is the location in the command prompt. We are inside SRC. Inside SRC, click on Java C command and keep the class file in the classes folder. Keep the class file in the app work. Keep the class file in the February batch DEV. Keep the class file in the app 2. Keep the class file in the app in different locations by using relative path, by using absolute path, how we can generate a class file in the different, different locations, how we can generate class files in the different locations, in the different locations, generating the class files. Already we know generating class file in the classes folder. If you want to generate class file in the classes folder, what we have to do? If you want to generate class file in the classes folder from the SRC, from the SRC, one step is going to app one. This is one step to reach to classes folder. After reaching to app one, from the app one, we can reach to classes folder as classes folder is a member inside app one. Totally two steps required to reach to classes folder from SRC. From SRC to reach to classes folder, two steps. One step is going back to app one, going to parent, that is app one. That is through that depth. After going to app one, come to the classes folder. After going to app one, come to the classes folder. Classes folder. After going to app one, come to the classes folder. Classes. Second step. Now here, from SRC, go to the app one, come to the classes. That is called as a relative path. In the relative path, only two steps are there. From SRC, go to app one, go to the classes folder. If it is an absolute path. Mm -hmm. Absolute path will not be considering the current location. Absolute path always starts from the root. This is one. From E drive, go to the February batch. This is one step. This is the second step. February batch to app one. From app one, come to the classes folder. This is the third one. This is the absolute path. Yesterday itself we have seen relative path and absolute path for the classes folder. We already experimented completely how to reach from SRC to classes in the relative approach and also in the absolute approach. Relative approach and in the absolute approach. Now, let us consider another look. I want to consider only app one folder. Let's go to another. I wanted to take target folder as a target folder. Assume this is the target folder, app one. App one is a target folder. From SRC, how to generate, how to generate a class file in the app one, class file in the app one. To generate class file in the app one, let us consider relative approach, relative approach directly, just one step back, for one step back, go to the dot dot, just dot dot is sufficient for the relative approach. Relative approach. If you wanted absolute approach, absolute approach, come to the E drive, from the E drive, February batch, from the February batch, come to the app one. So, totally two steps are. So, let us experiment both the steps, then we'll move to the other folder.
Java C space hyphen D. Da dot space da dot space a dot da dot represents a parent to the current folder da dot represents a parent to the current folder Dot dot represents parent to the current folder. center and check it out whether class file generated in the app one or the class file generated in the app one let me remove this let us provide absolute path always absolute path copy from the address bar always absolute path copy from the address bar We got the class file. So please observe. Dot dot is a relative approach to reach to app. This is the absolute path. Absolute path. Absolute path always starts from the root of the drive. February batch DV. Then app. Let us move to another one. How to reach to February batch DDB? Our target is February batch DDB. Let us make the target as February batch DDB. How to reach to the February batch DDB from SRC? From SRC, how to reach to February batch DDB? Let us see the relative path. Relative path. This is one step. Go through dot dot. This is one more step. Again go through dot dot. This is the parent and app 1. From app 1 go to the February batch DEV through one more parent. So the totally dot dot slash a dot. What is the absolute path? Absolute path is very simple just to come to here. E drive. Absolute path is very simple. Come to the E drive to the February batch. Let us experiment both. Two Steps back, two parents, space, a dot job. While going two parents back, from SRC reaching to app, from app one reaching to the February batch D. Come on. You can see there is a dot class file here. Let me remove this. Let's go far. Let's go far. Absolute path. 
absolute path always copy from the address bar. Similarly, we can reach to E drive also. How to reach to the E drive? Let us consider our next target is E drive folder. Next target is E drive folder. Let us consider I'm taking E drive. How we can reach to E drive from SRC relative bit? Relative to SRC, go one step back. Go one step back. From here, one more step. From here, one more step. Totally three times dot dot, dot dot slash, dot dot. Is option. Relative path. Relative path to the E drive from SRC. Relative path to the E drive from SRC. From SRC to the E drive. Go to the app one. From there, you draw a batch. From there, E drive. So, absolute path means simple. How it is simple? You have to represent only E drive. Only E drive. Let me show both. Three times a dot dot space here dot job. It will reach to the E drive. Let me show. You can see A dot class. I'm just removing. Let us move far. Absolute path. Absolute path. Just to E colon space E dot job. Hyphen D. Now check it out. In the bottom, you can see E dot class. I want the E colon E dot chow. Let 
Il nome è Dartas. Just to un forward slash it is expired. E colon slash. You can see. Just to keep e colon slash. E colon slash. These are very simple. Now, consider I want to reach to act two. My target directory. My target directory is an app2 folder. How to reach to app2 folder in the absolute way and in the relative way? So how to generate how to generate a class file in the app2 folder? So let us analyze relative approach. Relative approach. This is one step. Over dot dot slash. From here, go to another step. Dot dot slash. In the February batch, Act Two is a member. I can reach from the February batch to here. This is the third step. Relative path, relative path from SRC to Act Two. Act Two is a member of February batch DEV. From the February batch DEV only, you can reach to app 2. From the February batch DEV only, we can reach to app 2. SRC to app 1. From app 1 to February batch DEV. From there, into the app. This is about relative. How to reach to absolute way. Absolute way. Come to the E drive. February batch. This is one step. From the February batch, come to the app two. This is the second step. So totally two steps are in. Let me show the commands for the same. Two steps back and app two. Two steps back, then app two. This is the relative path, absolute path. Absolute path always copy from the of this bar. February batch DEV, app two fold. Likewise, you can reach to any location now, any, any location in the project's development, in the project's development, we will be using relative and absolute in several places. You should have a clarity on what is relative, what is absolute. The modules in reference within the same module will go for Relative. While referring to another module, we will go for absolute. Here also. By using relative path, we can reach to any directory, any directory within the drive. By using relative path, by using relative path, we can reach to any directory in the relate in the current drive. You cannot use relative path while reaching to another drive. Let us consider in the D drive, we have a February batch software. I need to develop a class file here. Relative path cannot be supporting. Observe this point. Relative path it is only for within the drive. Relative path it is only for within the drive. Within the drive. Within the drive. Relative path. You cannot cross to other drive. 
relative path cannot be crossed to other drive relative path cannot be crossed to other drive it is only for within the drive. only for within the drive cannot be crossed to other drive whenever you are looking for other drive you have to go for only absolute path absolute path if you want to do something in other drives if you want to do something in other drives if you want to do the something in other drives in other drive you have to go for absolute path absolute path whenever you are switching over from one drive to another drive whenever we are switching over from one drive to another drive only absolute path is possible absolute path now you can see a dot class a dot class generated in the d drive folder let me show once again java c space pipe and d space space a dot java this is the main difference between relative and absolute relative is starting from the current folder keep moving to any other folder which is there in the same drive absolute always it is starting from root of the drive absolute always starting from the the drive by using absolute you can specify other drives also by using absolute we can specify other drives also by using relative we can keep moving only within the current drive we can keep moving only within the current drive cannot be cannot be in other drives cannot be in other drives cannot be in other drives we cannot move to other drives by using relative path relative path limited to current drive only now let us move to the local variables local variables to the new java file file new class b class b in the class b i'll go for int i is equal to 10 save it as b dot java
So now here, I is a name to the variable. I is a name to the variable. It is a type as integer. Assigning one into value. Declaring in the main method. I is a part of the main method. I is a local to main method. I is inside a main method. That is why it is a local variable. I is inside a main method. I is inside a main method. That is why local to main. I is local to main. I is local to main. I is local to main. Local to main. I is a name to the variable. Name to the variable. It is a within the main method that is why local. The data type is hint. The data type is hint. Hint is a data type. Int is a data type. Int is a data type. Int is a data type. I is a name. I is a name. Ten is a value. Ten is a value. Ten is a value. I is a name of the variable. I is a name of the variable. I is the name of the variable, int is a data type, then is a value. <clears throat> so finally, we are printing. Let us trigger Java C command with a hyphen D. Come to the classes folder. Try running. So local variable. So three things you have to observe here. Int is a type. I is a name. Ten is a value. And it is a part of the main method. That is why it's a loop. Now we are printing I. While printing I, while printing I, we are getting a ten. We are getting ten. Ten is printing. Why? Because I value 10. I is an int type. You have to assign 10. That is int value. Come to the next one. Class name C. Small changes shall be any int value. Any int value. Let me go for one. I is the name of the variable. I is the name of the variable. You know very well about control J. So variable can change. Variable can change any number of times. Variable can change any number of times. Any value, even it can be negative value also. Save it as C dot Java compile and run.
variable. Try composing, compiling, and running the same. Please observe. Again, int i inside a main method body, int i inside a main method body. So it is a local to main, local to main. You can treat this as a local variable. i is a name to the local variable. i is a name to the local variable. Int is a data type. Int is a type, type, data type. One is a initial value. One is a initial value, first value, first value. So int i is equal to one. You can treat like a variable declaration and initialization. Variable declaration and initialization. Two things we are developing in the same line. Two things, variable declaration and initialization. Declaration and also initialization. We declared what is i, we declared what is i, we also provided initial value. That is why it is called as a declaration and initialization. Then you can keep using i in the rest of the main method. We specified what is i. We specified what is i. In rest of the place, we can keep using i. Now here, we are using i value. We are using i value for printing. We are using i value for printing. We are using i value for printing. Please consider this. It is a reinitialization. It is not a declaration. We already declared here. Only by declaring we have to specify int. You should not specify int once again here. 
You should not specify in to one sugain here. You should not specify in to one sugain here. These are reinitializations. You can reinitialize any number of times. We can reinitialize any number of times. We can reinitialize any number of times. Any number of times we can reinitialize. Initially, we assigned initial value one. One is spring. Afterwards, we are modifying same i value to two. Same i value to two. Then we are using current value two. Same i value modifying to twenty. Then we are using twenty. Same i value modifying to minus one. So now you can understand the meaning of variable. Meaning of a variable. So something like one smallest container. One smallest container. One box. Smallest container. One box. We stored one initially. Then we replaced one to two. Now one is no more in the box. Two is available. Then the two replaced to twenty. Now two no more. Two replaced to twenty. Then twenty replaced to minus four. Twenty replaced to minus four. So please observe. Varying values we are storing in one box. Varying value. That is why it's called as a variable. Variable. Variable is a smallest container where we can store one value. That value can modify whenever you want. You can modify that value wherever you want. Variable. A smallest container. Where you can store one value, one value, one value. Initially, what? Then that one is replacing to two. That two is replacing to twenty. Twenty replacing to minus four. In the variable, we cannot store two values. In the variable, we cannot store two values. At any time, only one value. Whenever you are trying to provide a new value, the old value will be replaced. The old value will be getting erased. In the programming, in the programming, we require a place where we can store customer values. We can store the results for the logic, whichever you want to show back to the customer. It should be. A place to store the values. A place to store the values. Customer providing a value to you. You are receiving that values. You have to store that values in the variable. Then use that variable in the formula to process, to provide a logic. Then get the results. That results also stored in the variable. So variable is a smallest container where we can store one varying value. We can store one varying value. Try compiling and running. Come back to the SRC, everybody. No, before erasing, we are printing, right? No, no. If you are not using printlen, finally you will get minus 41. 
प्लीज ऑब्जर्व आई इज इक्वल टू वन वी आर प्रिंटिंग वन आफ्टर प्रिंटिंग वन ओनली वी आर मॉडिफाइंग टू टू नाउ वन इज नॉट अवेलेबल टू इज नाउ वी आर प्रिंटिंग टू इज प्रिंट आफ्टर प्रिंटिंग टू वी आर मॉडिफाइंग टू ट्वेंटी नाउ टू मोर टू नो मोर टू नो मोर वी आर प्रिंटिंग आफ्टर ट्वेंटी वी आर मॉडिफाइंग टू माइनस फोर then minus for this print yes last whichever correct right come to the next one come to the d class int a is equal to i'm starting with minus 10 i'm printing a Let's go for a is equal to zero. Let's go. Yeah. Tell me. Initialization. Int is a declaration. Int is a declaration part. It's a data type. any name to the variable any name to the variable you can do like this also while modifying take the current value and then modify Save it as a D dot Java compile and run. is compose compile and run
Compose, compile, and run. So please observe any name to the variable, not only i. Any name to the variable, not only i. Any value, any value, but it should be int value. Int value. I'm trying to reassign the same value. Again, different value. Again, different value. I'll be getting 90,000 here. 90,000 adding to 20 more thousands. You'll be getting 1 lakh 10,000. That 1 lakh 10,000 you're deducting with 70,000. You will be getting 40,000. So please observe. We are applying the current value to assign a new value. The current value getting added with 20,000. This is a kind of formula. This type of things we will be using in the program. It's a simple formula. Simple formula. So what is this formula? Current value should be incremented with 20,000. Current value should be incremented with 20,000. Take the current value, increment to 20,000, get the result, assign that result back to it. So most of the people thinking like, I'm poor in the program. This type of statements only you can find in the program. So to do the programming, only seriousness, sincerity, anything you can able to learn. Come to the classes for sorry, come to the SRC regarding the Java. Come to the classes folder by running D. Same variable keep modifying any number of times. Same variable keep modifying any number of times. Yesterday we have seen printing the literals, literals, values, values, printing the literals, printing the values. Now we are printing a variable. We are printing variable. We are printing the variable. We are printing the variables. We are printing the variables. By using SOP, anything can be printed. Anything can be printed. First output is minus 2. Check it out. What is the first output? Minus 2. What could be the second output? Second output. You can see here 0. What is the third output? 90,000. What is the fourth output? One lakh ten thousands. The last output forty thousands. So any any int value. Yesterday we have seen without a decimal, any number is an int. We also mentioned a is an int type. This portion is a declaration. We specified what is a. A is a name to int type variable. A is a name to int type variable. Come to the class E. Int P. I'm choosing a name as a P. Then B is equal to. Is also absolutely possible.
We know control J is twenty. Same I'm using. Save it as you don't show up. This is called as a declaration. We declared what is P. P is a name to the variable or thing to time. This whole statement is called as a declaration. This is the initialization first value. Earlier, we were providing declaration and initialization in the same, same line. Now, declaration in one line, initialization in another line, declaration in one line, initialization in another line. Declaration in one line, initialization in another line. So we declared what is P. We have initialized. Then we are using P. Then P getting added with the 10 more units. Initially it was a 10. Now P will become a 20. Twenty into fifty. The current variable value we are using. Declaration, initialization, usage. Declaration, initialization, usage. to 50. You can modify any number of times. You can modify any number of times. Let me develop compilation. The class is folder. Everybody can able to understand. Declaration in one statement, initialization in another statement. Declaration in one statement, initialization in another statement. Then keep using any number of times. Keep using any number of times.
keep using any number of times. Please name to the variable. Data type and name both together we can treat as a declaration. We just specified what is P. P is a name to int type variable. P is a name to int type variable. Then is the initial value. We are providing a first value to P. Whichever is the first value that is called as the initial value. Initial value. Initial value. Let us see one more example in the same grounds. Let me go for int i. i is equal to 1. Just to compile it, right? If class.
int type, int type, int type variable which can store int type value. Assign only int type value. Assign only int type value. Int type value. Come to the next two one. G. Values can be a string value. Yesterday we have seen values can be a double values. Values can be Boolean character values. Whichever value you are trying to store, type also should be seen. Let me go for Boolean I. equal to false. Now print i. Let me go for i is equal to true. Is equal to false. any time I is equal to two, I is equal to false. I is a Boolean type. You can store only Boolean values. You cannot store other than Boolean. There should be a type, type. I type is a Boolean. You can call it a data type. Boolean data type. I can choose any name. I'm choosing B1. Let's go for just a declaration. Then B1 is equal to true. Just a declaration. Then B1 is equal to true. Let's have a B1. Then
Please check it out. B1 is a Boolean type. B1 is a Boolean type. What we are doing here initially, just a declaration, then assigning, then modifying. Declaration, assignment, and modify. So try compiling. Compilation should be from SRC. H dot Java. Run it. You are getting a true and false, true and false. Go to the other example. File new Java. Class name I. Double variable. I am choosing B1, double value, Any time you can change the value. Double values. Yesterday we have seen what is a double value. Just compile and run. Nine zero one dot G. Compilation and run both will be very success. Variable, it is only for only for storing, storing, using any varying data. Any varying data you can store and use whenever you want it. Whenever you want it. Store and use whenever you want it. Store and use whenever you want it. Let's see another example. J class. J 
tar C1 Yesterday we have seen what is car. What is car? Car is a one character under single quotation. One character under single quotation. Only one character under single quotation. Only one character. It can be even digit also. P, Q, and 3. P, Q, 3, P, Q, and 3. Try compiling and run. Come to the next one. The last data type that is a string. Let me go for string S1 is equal to under double quotation. Anything under double quotation is a string. Anything under double quotation is a string. Anything under double quotation is a string.
anything under double quotation is a string string type while keeping string type sc should be in the upper case notice this point string always sc in the upper case string sc in the upper case while Try compiling and run. These are the very basics of the local variables. Only basics. Still, lot more points are there. So keep practicing all these points. I'll show you other advanced points in the next session.